If you're studying for step one, this will help you for anatomy, MSK. If you're studying for step two, this will be good for pediatrics for you. I saw a similar question. Obviously, I wrote this question, but I saw a similar question on one of the newer PEDS forms for 2CK. So I jacked the idea of it and I made this one. Okay, that's what we're doing here. We're teaching you stuff that's relevant for the exam. Now, before we get started, I'm going to be an asshole like I typically am and tell you to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Hit the button down below. Hit the like button. Okay, let's get this to all time highs. Hit the bell if you want notifications. And find me on Instagram at Melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. Now, let's start the fucking question. Six year old girl, she's brought by her mother into hospital. One day history, left hip pain and limping, no past medical history or recent trauma. She recently recovered from an upper respiratory tract infection, three days of coryza, dry cough, afebrile, mild pain, palpation of the left hip. The girl resists passive active motion. There is no apparent erythema. Ultrasound x-ray are negative, which the following is most likely diagnosis. Okay, so let's just go through the answer choices sequentially here. Choice A, like calf parrots disease, wrong fucking answer. This refers to idiopathic avascular necrosis of the femoral head. If they want avascular necrosis on USMLE, like calf parrots disease, they are going to give you a five to eight year old, which this girl fits that demographic. However, the x-ray will show you a contracted slash fl flattened femoral head. Even if you're not a radiology expert, you don't need to be. You need to just at least verbally memorize that you would expect a contracted slash flattened femoral head if we have leg calf parathes disease. If we have an etiology for a vascular necrosis that is known, that is, it's not idiopathic, sickle cell, chronic corticosteroids, Gaucher or Gaucher disease, lysosomal storage disease, if we have a known etiology, we do not call it leg calf parathes, okay? And I'm being pedantic right now because I have seen this asked on USMLE where they'll have leg calf parathes disease as one answer choice. They'll have avascular necrosis as another answer choice. And you say, I thought they were the same thing, okay? You, you, you hear what I'm getting at? Must be idiopathic for leg calf parathes. Let's just keep reading here. So moralgia parasthetica. Wrong answer. This is going to be numbness, pain, paresthesias of the anterolateral thigh due to compression of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Can be due to trauma, obesity. It can be iatrogenic, such as due to prior hernia surgery. When students don't know an answer, they choose weird sounding shit. Okay? Moralgia parasthetica, I've seen this on 2CK forms. I've never seen it as a correct answer. It's always a distractor. But you should at least be aware of what it is in theory. Septic arthritis versus toxic synovitis. I'm going to come back to these two in a second. Spondylolisthesis, wrong answer. This is going to be the answer on the USMLE. If they mention a quote-unquote step-off, when you have one vertebra that is jutted out posteriorly, significantly, relative to the infra and supra adjacent vertebrae. Literally, they're going to show you an x-ray, and you have your vertebral column, and then you have one vertebra that is jutted posteriorly, significantly relative to the above and below vertebra. Okay, so this is spondylolisthesis. They say a step off in the question. This is often due to trauma. It can be seen in athletes who have hyperextension. It can be due to osteoarthritis. Wrong answer in this case. So now this question comes down to comparing septic arthritis versus toxic synovitis. The correct answer here is toxic synovitis, also known as transient synovitis. It's a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that we need to rule out septic arthritis, and then we can say we have toxic slash transient synovitis as an answer. Now, toxic synovitis 
classically textbook and what you're going to see in USMLE questions, if it is the diagnosis, they will give you a kid who's between three and eight years old who has an upper respiratory tract infection that's viral. And then we have subsequent inflammation of the joint synovium in the hip, resulting in hip pain. It's self-limiting. We treat with NSAIDs or acetaminophen. So I've seen one question on 2CK forms where it's just strictly transient or toxic synovitis as the answer. I've seen another question where they have NSAIDs as an answer, okay? Not steroids. You're going to give NSAIDs or acetaminophen. Now, we differentiate this from septic arthritis in that if the U.S. simile wants septic arthritis, they are going to tell you the kid has a hot, red, painful joint, okay? We don't have anything here in this vignette about warmth or uh, heat of the joint, the uh, color. We do not have anything about uh, erythema. In fact, I actually wrote uh, there's no apparent erythema, okay? The patient's afebrile. It's not mandatory a patient has a fever with septic arthritis. I'd say nine out of 10 times uh, the patient will have a fever for septic arthritis. I've seen one question only where the patient did not have a fever, but the rest of the vignette was obvious. It's notable the patient does not, in this case, she does not have a past medical history or recent trauma because a big risk factor in pediatrics for septic arthritis is JRA, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. When you have abnormal joint architecture due to inflammatory joint disease, that's a big risk factor for septic arthritis. So I don't want to get too, tan too tangential, but they'll give you a, a vignette characteristic of JRA, and then they'll also give you a hot, red, painful joint with a fever, and you say, okay, that's septic arthritis and peds. Recent trauma is notable because this is a big uh, etiology for septic arthritis as well. They'll give you a 14-year-old girl who had a kickboxing tournament two days ago, went for a long hike, was in a car accident, hit her knee, and now she's got a hot, red, painful knee. That's septic arthritis, okay? Febrile patient. Here, toxic synovitis, transient synovitis, viral infection in a kid three to eight years old, followed by it's not going to be red. It's not going to be uh, a febrile patient, okay? And you can assess somewhat subjectively and say, doesn't sound like septic arthritis. This is going to be toxic synovitis, okay? There's a lot we can chat about. I know you guys want to see more concise clips on my end. So you know the deal. I'm going to put out more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.